So thank you very much, uh, Deb. So um, this, I'm rather new in the field, and um, previously I was, and I'm still basically working with Duchenne patients. And in Duchenne patients, we are um, now preparing um, a gene therapy trial uh, in non-ambulant Duchenne. Because most of trials in Duchenne are conducted in ambulant patients, and there is not a single clue that what we acquire in ambulant patients will be translated to non-ambulant patients. And since it can have some side effects, it's a major concern to know if what's working in ambulant patients is also working in non-ambulant patients. And if you want to make a trial in, in non-ambulant patients, you need at first to have an outcome measure. Because if you want to make a trial, you have to measure something. And to measure an appling is something which can appear to be easy, but basically it's not. And for years now, we have developed at the Institute of Biology different outcome measures for the appling. And there are different ways of assessing an appling. You can assess the strength, you can assess the function, you can assess the activity. And we have developed those tools. Um, some of you have participated yesterday at some proof of concept study uh, with this device. And um, with these tools and with outcome measures, with other outcome measures such as respiration and quality of life, we wanted to go through to a longitudinal function study. So this study um, will be not only in Europe, but also in the US. Uh, conducted in the US in the NIH and in Toronto by Jim Darling and Carson Bonneman. And in the Europe, it will be done in the Institute of Myology with a kind of new concept. We did not want um, to ask the patient to come every six months to the Institute of Myology, but rather to send the physio um, where the patient lives to meet the patient at his own place, at his own environment. and. Um, Basically, even on a very uh, pragmatic point of view, it's much cheaper yeah. to ask a physio to go to the patient than to have the patient to come from Paris if he's living somewhere in Europe. So um, this will not only concern males, but also symptomatic females, because we know that there can be some deficits in um, uh, carriers and in some symptomatic females. Duration of the study, basically of the follow-up, will be two years. So there will be one year of enrollment, and then two years of follow-up. So um, what's this um, functional assessment? At first, uh, we believe that something very important is the respiration. And the time that a patient is able to spend without a respiratory support is something which is strongly correlated with the quality of life. We want also to measure motor function. Um, motor function can be assessed by different kinds of scales, like MFM, like sharp intent, or amethyst scales that have been developed in Duchenne patients, but as far as I know, have never been validated in MTM patients. Uh, we want also to assess spontaneous activity and you know that there are many actimeters um, on the market, but there is no, not a single actimeter which is able to capture the movement and the activity of a patient who moves um, only a little bit. So with a small cap in France, we have developed such an actimeter, um, which is a ultrasensitive actimeter, and which is able to capture all the activity of a very weak patient. And we have uh, just validated this device in Duchenne patients, and it was possible to assess perfectly the activity of a 29 years old Duchenne. So our patients with very weak movement and very poor activity because the system is ultra sensitive. So this is something we are strong believer in because we believe that if we can assess the daily activity, the daily life of the patients, this is directly correlated with the quality of life, with the real life, not only a change on a scale, but a change in the life. Um, we want also to measure the muscle strength and the muscle mass. Muscle mass is a kind of biomarker, but you know that in a muscle disease, muscle strength is something important. And one more time, it's not so easy to measure the strength of someone who is very weak. You know, for instance, that there are devices like the JAMA who are graduated up, 
um, every 500 grams. So if you want to jump one graduation, you have to gain 500 grams. Yesterday, we conducted some ex um, experience of proof of concept in, during the, the, the study, and we used, for instance, for the grip, this device, uh, which is ultra-sensitive and is able to capture a strength of 10 grams. And that was very interesting because with some of the volunteers in the study, we could demonstrate that we could uh, reach a 10% variability of the assessment, which is excellent in, in this kind of population, and we could capture strength of 180 grams in different patients with a good reliability, which is just impossible to do with a standard myometer. So we will also capture any information about organ functions like liver, kidney, and heart, but also about the quality of life of both patients and family, because we are strong believers that if we want to, if we change something to the quality of life of the patient, we have also to do it for the family. And if we improve the patients, this must have a consequence also for the family. So, um, how can you help? Deb, is it me? Yeah, it's, it's you to do. I'll do it if you want. <laughs> okay. I was going to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. So anyway, how can you help? Introduce yourself to our team. Um, and our team is, is everybody, all of the researchers who are here. Um, Kristen Cunningham and Christine Burton and Hal Landy are all on the Valeria team. But Say hello, talk to us, tell us what you think, ask questions, because that's what we're here for. Secondly, we'd love you to tell us about yourself and your child. We would like to know the top three things you would like a treatment to address. And, to that end, we have postcards over on the table here. And Kristen is, is back there ready to help. You can fill them out and give them to one of us. You can take them home and fill them out and send them back in. But we'd like to know that, because we want to know if this functional study is on target missing something, it would be really good to know that from you. You're living this every day. Um, and thirdly, I, I should add one more thing here. Please do the genetic testing and please enroll in the, in the longitudinal functional study. Okay, the more data we have before we start treatment studies, the better. Have some time until our treatments are ready. Let's get a good baseline here so that we can prepare for that. Okay? Thank you so much. Everybody. involvement for carrier females. There's many mothers within our community that are affected. And Absolutely are. Yes. So, yes. Do you have the ability to take some females with mm -hmm. today and tomorrow? Okay. Okay. So there's a criteria for uh, considering a female as symptomatic, which is 80% of the function as defined by the motor function measurement. Um, so we, we just have to check um, before that. So have them come to us and we'll... Mm -hmm. It's a screening event. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, well, can you explain a little bit more how this um, device to measure activity works? I mean, is it the, uh, attached to special muscle or how does it work? You should not ask me this question because I'll keep the microphone for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> to make short a very long and lovely story. Um, there are two pieces of the device which are basically exactly the same and, and they are made of three accelerometers, three gyroscopes and one magnetometer. One is carried on by the wheelchair and one is carried on by the upper limb of the patients. Okay? So during the daytime um, the wheelchair is moving or the wheelchair is not moving. If the wheelchair is not moving, the upper limb is moving or the upper limb is not moving. If the upper limb is moving, it's the patient who moves the upper limb or it's the car driver who is moving the upper limb. And we have conducted different experience and now with the two devices, we are able to discriminate 100% of the different situations. So we are now able to, to say, okay, the patient is moving this movement last 
four seconds. And now in, uh, the second, the next step is to quantify um, this movement. And we have developed a model of energy expenditure um, based on the kind of movement the patient is doing, uh, keeping his elbow um, on, on the wheelchair. And we have demonstrated in, in Duchenne patients that um, this energy expenditure is strictly dependent, strictly uh, proportionate to the efficacy of the patients during a validated task or during a daily life task, like typing the computer, writing a sentence, and so on. So we are able, at the end of the day, to tell you, OK, the patient has moved uh, 842 times his upper limb. The average uh, duration of movement was 4.5 seconds, for instance. And the total energy expenditure by the upper limb was, let's say, 100 joule per kilo. And um, in Duchenne patients, we give the accelerometer for two weeks. Why two weeks? Because you don't move the same way uh, Monday and Sunday. Um, and uh, because some parents, some children are um, under the care of the mother during one week and the father another week. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be sure that there is no difference. And basically what we observe in Duchenne is that there is no difference. Because when you are weak, when you are in the wheelchair, the limitation is not the weather, the, it's not the social factors, the limitation factors is the weakness. And what we have observed in Duchenne is that, except for strong patients with Rook 2 scores, um, in this patient we can see, uh, for instance, when they have special activities, but in most of them, the total amount of activity during the day is the same. And even if you have a blast of activity because you are uh, involved in a, a sport activity and so on, then you move less in the afternoon. And so the global activity remains the same at the end of the day. So that's globally the way it's working. One more, one, more time, one more thing, we make a competition for fathers. So if you want to break the record, which is 52 kilo with the grip, you can try. And then you, you can earn the business card of that. <laughs> the record for people here or, or globally? Globally, so 55 kilo the record. You can try to break it. Not to break the device, to break the record. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, time for more questions. Any questions for Deb? Uh, I'm around.